What's up guys, a long time no speak. Um, today I'm bringing you something very interesting. I know a lot of you want to see these kind of videos, so I'm gonna start making them more. Um, this is the project file for my new song, Nostalgia, um, which is out now, so go, feel free to check out the song before you watch this, but I'm gonna take you on an in-depth look at the entire mix um, and everything that I have going on in the production, uh, just to give you guys a little insight on how I make my music. But before we get into this, there's just one thing I want to talk to you about. I was contacted recently by a company called Megastar and they're running a competition very soon. It's a talent competition that anyone can enter, so if you're a dancer, if you're a producer like me, if you're a singer, if you're an actor, pretty much anything, you can enter into this competition and with the possibility of winning a million dollars. So the reasons I'm telling you about this is that one, I'll be honest with you, this is a sponsored post, the company have asked me to do this, but two, I know that a lot of you out there are seriously talented, like over the past few years that I've been doing this, you guys have sent me in so many videos of yourself playing music and singing and all of that stuff, so I know there's some talented people out there that will probably want to enter this competition. And I've actually entered my own video into the competition, so even if you're not going to enter yourself, maybe you can download the app and vote for your friends to win that million dollars. But the coolest thing about this competition, which is why I really liked it, is that the fans decide who wins. There's no celebrity panel, there's nothing like that. The fans vote and the winner will win a million dollars, which is crazy. So all of you people out there that have some hidden talents, go download the app, get yourself into this competition because you literally have nothing to lose and you could win a life-changing amount of money. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into this mix. Okay, so here is the mix for my new single, Nostalgia. Um, it looks kind of crazy, there's a lot going on. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you through each section of the song. Uh, it's not that, that um, crazy a structure, so it won't take long, but I'm also gonna give you some of my favorite plugins, tips and tricks, and uh, Hopefully that'll be everything you guys um, are looking for when you want to get this involved with a mix. <laughs> so let's start with the drums. Um, a very important part of the part of the song, I think. Very important part of drums. Let's kick it off straight away with one of my absolute favourite plugins, especially on kick drums, is the One Knob Fatter by Waves. Um, I use this on all, pretty much anyway, all of my kick drums, um, just to give them a little bit of squeeze and make them sound that bit tighter and fatter and gives the, it gives the sub of a kick a nice little bit of pressure, which I find really interesting. So just take a look to that, take a listen to that on its own. Um, I'll try it without first. And then with. So you can just hear that it has like a slightly fatter sound, um, as you can as you can expect with the uh, the name of the plugin. Um, but yeah, I use that plugin a lot. I re I really love how it um, just gives a, a kick drum an extra bit of punch. You know what? I'm just gonna play the beat um, and percussion all at once for the for the verse. So that is kind of all of the elements um, going in together, just making up the rhythm section of the song, uh, or should I say the percussion and beat section of the song. So there's really not a huge amount going on, but I'll run you through each section. This snare I found and I absolutely love, I love, love, love it. I created it with I think three, yeah that's muted, so yeah three different um, battery four, battery, yeah battery four samples um, working together to create that sound. And that's running um, just through some EQ because all the processing again has been done through battery, and then uh, it's all been bussed out to a snare bus, which uh, is doing some multiband compression. I'm a sucker for this plugin. Um, it's the True Verb, and although I'm not actually a big fan of a lot of of the plugin itself, um, I don't really like the layout. Um, I love the medium plate preset. Um, because you can just tweak that and get some really, really nice reverb tails on there. So if you listen to how that sounds, it listen to how it sounds without it, and now how it sounds with it, it just it creates so much space, and it's such a nice sound. Uh, sorry about that, guys. I had to quickly change the camera, uh, the battery in the camera, because uh, it ran out. So we're back. What I should probably do is play, even though I've just gone into the beat a little bit, I'm just going to play um, a bit of the track so you can hear how everything sounds together. I'm going to mute all the vocals because you don't want to hear any of that rubbish. You just want to hear the, um, the production stuff, I'm pretty sure. Dishwasher's done, everyone. I 
probably the most important part of this song is this sample here, which is the um, the All I Need and the Here and samples, which I'll show you. And that is kind of like the entire, um, it's what the entire song was based around, was those two samples that I created. I kind of, I kind of came up with the, um, the hook melody, um, all I need is here and now. That was like the main thing, um, the main hook of the song. So I thought, well, screw it, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna try and make something melodical and synthy almost, but um, a vocal sound, like a chopped up vocal sample. Um, and I came up with that, and that is then where the rest of the track sort of exploded out from, was those two samples. L let's get into what kind of creates the meat, what the, the meat of the song. Subtle piano sound. One of the greatest things about Contact um, is Alicia's Keys. Uh, it is genuinely, I think, my favourite piano um, VST that I've ever heard. It just sounds incredible and it's really versatile. It's a good pop piano. Mix that with these like reggae mallet keys, which is a Logic Sculpture sound. It creates something really tonal and really, really nice. But the chorus is where it kind of it kind of gets a bit crazy because there's quite a lot going on. These guitars, these distorted guitars, very simple. Mixed with uh, this guitar, another distorted guitar but doing a bit of high end. And then mixed with these synths. Another one. So you've got a lot of frequency bands competing for the same kind of space and uh, when what I've managed to do is create something that's quite, kind of like um, a wall of sound but has some nice movement to it as well. So you can hear that here. It's a nice background that is all audible, I think. <laughs> this synth in particular was this. It started off its, its life on this song as this. So like a completely straight up chord, but it was just too much. It was just too. It made the chorus sound too boxy. So I had to rein it in and make and try and bring some rhythm into it. And this is the first time I've actually used this plugin by Sound Toys called Tremolator. Um, and I found this little box of uh, complex rhythms. And I don't know how you make the complex rhythms. I've tried to figure out what this custom thing here does and try and figure out how I can put my own rhythms into this into this plugin. I still can't figure it out, one day I will, but I found this uh, particular preset called Heavy Cuts and uh, it just turned this into this. Which help, it really helps um, drive the rhythm in the chorus and gives the ear something a bit more to listen to than just like a straight up in your face chord, um, which is kind of just too much. So listen to it all together. It just, I feel like it just makes it work a bit more. Let's skip back a couple of seconds um, to the pre-chorus. So there's this cool like, I've called it marimba, but it's, it's like a super affected marimba. It's not, it's not just a simple, a simple sound, it's just been super processed. It sounds kind of weak and crappy on its own, but with the piano underneath, it sounds really nice. So here you've got um, this little, this little sound here. And that, I think, that appears twice in the whole song, and in the, once in each pre-chorus. Um, but I just loved how random it is. And it just, it just really helps, it really helps uh, make that section of the song a bit more interesting. So that's what I'm trying to incorporate more in my music, is, is to add little flourishes here and there, which are kind of unexpected, um, but give the ear something a bit more interesting to listen to than just the, the simple piano chords which was there before. Let's go to the bass. The bass in the chorus is actually the same bass sound doubled, but one's an octave above, just to make it sound fatter. So you've got like a you've got two different two sub basses with the ES2 uh, EQ'd slightly differently and at different levels, but one's just an octave above to give like a fatter, richer bass sound um, for the hook. Like this this Foreman synth is one of my favourite parts of this song. This like. It was a, it was the vocal melody first. It was like I remember thinking. So doo -doo 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 -doo. in Omnisphere, you can get up like a formant synth, and um, it sounds like a like a person making like a vowel sound, like ah wah wah. 
So this little um, sample here is something I did that with and um, it just creates a really good transition into the next section of the chorus. Just, I think this really helps drive that section along. The thing that I really wanted to create is something like uh, euphoric, which was like a melody hook. And I was going to do this huge like um, synth drop and uh, vocal melodies, um, chopped up vocals, just to make something really heavy and interesting and show a bit showy offy basically. I watched a, I watched a um, a video uh, talking to DJ Swivel. Um, who is working on the Chainsmokers album he basically just he said one thing and he was like a song is supposed to tell a story and I think I forgot that when I was making this track is, is that I was just trying to make the production so intense and crazy that everyone was like wow look how good Sean is at creating uh, this these crazy synth melodies and making a song just sound like ridiculously huge when what I needed to focus on was how I can tell the story and how I can satisfyingly bring it to a close almost in the in the most subtle way without like having to show off too much um, so instead of doing like a crazy big synth drop I just added this little synth melody in like and it's basically just a loop um, which goes over the top of everything else. And I feel like it, it helps create that sort of euphoric, uplifting, um, post-chorus kind of sound. That sat better in the mix than um, all this crazy stuff I was doing beforehand. So before I go, I'm going to run you through my vocal, um, my vocal chain, because that is one of the most common questions I get is, what vocal chain do you use? I always start with an EQ, roll off some low end, and... Uh, I don't usually boost this early in the in the channel strip, but um, I have here for some reason. Um, straight into the Arvox. The Arvox is another one of my favourite plugins. Um, it's a very very simple compressor, and I always drop around uh, six to seven dB, a bit less if it's a louder vocal, um, and then straight into a deesser, as you can see here. Um, the RDSer, so the Renaissance Vox and the Renaissance Deesser are a good pair in my opinion. And then I go into the CLA76, which is another Waves compressor. Um, I use this a lot, this this compressor. Weirdly, I've gone into another compressor, which I don't usually do, but I'm you know I'm rocking triple compressors on this vocal for some reason. Um, but that's fine. You can do that if it sounds right. Oh damn, quadruple compressors. Jeez, I had no idea. Okay, so I'm rocking four compressors on this one vocal, which is kind of unheard of. I never usually do that. I'll show you my standard plug-in chain in a second. Um, and then I go always go into another EQ um, at the end just to tidy up some of the frequencies that might have been added back in by the compression. This is how I load up a new vocal. When I'm tracking vocals and everything, I always run it through these. So usually I'll turn them all off, but I always start with a bit of auto-tune, always muted, just so that it's there when I start to comp vocals. And when I've comped them, I'll just go through and tune up some bits that might not be um, in pitch. Um, then straight into the EQ, like I said before. Then straight into the Arvox, as always. Our, uh, Renaissance DSO straight after that. CLA 76. And then the API 550A, which is a great EQ, which is usually the EQ I finish on, but for this song, I finished on another um, channel EQ by um, Logic. So, uh, although I say that I always go with this vocal chain, I use other vocal chains all the time. That's just kind of like my go-to, especially for when I'm doing cover songs. Always load that up and just tweak it from, from there to find something I like. So that's kind of the whole song, you know. Um, if you want to know more, um, about my mixing process, please leave a comment in, uh, in the comment section below and just ask me any questions, I'll be happy to answer them, um, like what gear I use. Um, I'm going to do a video talking about the studio pretty soon, um, just to run you through all the gear I use. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, I know you've been asking for these videos for a while, so I'm, I'm glad I've finally been able to, you know, give you one. But also don't forget, all you have to do to enter the competition is download the Megastar app. If you want to download that, make sure you're heading over there, enter your video and also vote for me because it'll be great to win a <laughs> million dollars. That'd be kind of nice, wouldn't it, I guess? But anyway, it is now gone midnight and uh, I, need to, I need to go to bed. So uh, thank you again for watching. I'll see you again soon for some more music. I love you very much. Peace.